I like, uh, I like the uh, title, Realization, because that's what we, the structural engineers, have to do. We have the dreams of a developer, the dreams of an architect, and then the engineer has to make it into a reality. And that's what we enjoy. Uh, that's the uh, model of the building. And uh, <coughs> I will take you uh, a little bit to the uh, history, the, the typical floor, the site plan. And um, what we know that uh, at the east side, uh, At the east side, uh, all the, there is an existing building, and all the vertical transportation takes place on this side. So it capitalized by having a concrete wall alongside the uh, east side facade. Then we start plugging. We looked at the architecture and uh, the planning inside. And um, the, the theory of these slender buildings is that uh, what type of structure can you create to intrude uh, the least amount of structure inside the, uh, the building itself? Because the sizes are so narrow that uh, if we are going to place too much, then will be structure and no building to occupy. So uh, that's the biggest challenge. In any event, uh, we created at the uh, northern side where a sort of a uh, flange wall, and uh, again was dictated by the in concert with the architecture. Then we placed another one at the uh, southern uh, southern sheer wall, and uh, the key is that you have to create a, 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 a structure that will be uh, standing and will have the limited amount of movements, lateral movements. But in addition to that, what it's controlling in a slender building, it's what we call it the acceleration. And uh, the acceleration is the perce perception of the individual uh, uh, occupying uh, the building uh, against mov movements. And uh, there are no written codes, but there are all kinds of criteria that we try very much to be within the acceptable limits. Uh, among the studies, we figure out that by placing another wall into the uh, middle, will create a better uh, um, acceleration, a, a more acceptable one. We were not there, but we were intrigued by the fact that uh, this wall is just going to uh, s uh, s uh, slice into two uh, the residential in the middle. So then the other alternate, we said, maybe we'll create a punch wall that will be a perimeter wall. And uh, this one is uh, expensive because it's too much for work and uh, costs too much money. But more than that, uh, the architects were looking and the developers for some southern light. And the punch walls are columns. Uh, that in this case were six foot on center with what is called a spindle beam. Now the columns could be acceptable, but this spindle beam, it's limiting the uh, height of the uh, window. So uh, was not too well received. <laughs> then we, ca we came with uh, something that really worked very well with the architectural layout <coughs> because they have uh, they have three type of uh, apartments, and uh, the, our shear walls were just uh, as demising walls in between the apartments. In addition to that, we utilize a punch wall, in other words, columns with a spindle beam, and then uh, some columns that are placed more or less at the same intensity but without the spindle beam that are also very 
although it's written here gravity in columns, they were used as a type of a tubular frame together with the punch wall and the shear walls. And uh, this has makes us happy and the architects and the developers because we had a building that was performing within acceptable acceleration and acceptable lateral deformation. And uh, we didn't use any uh, additive like a, a damper or well, anything else. And uh, was a pretty happy marriage. Taking account that uh, at the south side, we have a, uh, a ratio of width to height uh, of uh, uh, about 12. At the north side, the ratio is 16. And uh, at the middle, that really it's uh, carried by the two ends, uh, it's uh, more than that. So um, what we had at the end, uh, we had a product that worked very well architecturally and um, also structural and also economical. Uh, that's a three-dimensional, and as you can see, that it's very little intrusion inside. So uh, considering the small spaces, we don't have too many columns and things like that. That's the other view of the uh, same three-dimensional. Now, <coughs> it's interesting at the very bottom, it's also an expression of the narrow building. Uh, we had used uh, caissons, in this case, with caissons with the uh, uh, one meter diameter with a capacity of 1,800 tons. But uh, what happened, considering that the structure is located at the, uh, just at the perimeter, and uh, the caissons are also at the perimeter of the building, uh, you, the intent is to have the structure lining up with the caissons down below. And uh, it's a difficult task because physically you cannot place the caissons so close to the uh, building line. You need some space like 18 inches or so. So uh, these are the caissons, a typical detail of a caisson. But that's what happened in this case. Uh, here were the uh, columns or buttresses at the uh, perimeter, and here were the caissons. Uh, so here we use a tie and strut system that we could take over the eccentricity from the perimeter to the caisson below. Uh, this was a little bit better incident because uh, the walls were pretty thick anyhow. So we are not too far in terms of the eccentricity of the columns to the walls above. But uh, on the other part, in the center of the building, where the, it's even narrower than that, uh, in order to accomplish the same, these are the caissons, this is the wall above, uh, we would have to introduce what is called some buttresses. By having buttresses in this narrow space, I guess would be hardly any, any, uh, anything left for walking. So uh, we couldn't do that. So we have to use something else. Sylvan. Sylvan, you're running out of time. Over. Okay, <laughs> let me put, uh, let me increase the acceleration then. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another type of, well, as I mentioned before, this is the wind tunnel, well, and uh, we have two exposures. We have many exposures because this table is going around. That's again the model of the building. Here are the strength of the concrete. We have to use high strength concrete at the bottom to increase the stiffness it rather than color. making the walls wider and thicker. And uh, in top of it, we have to increase the mass. Uh, <coughs> Uh, in addition to the stiffness, the acceleration is controlled by the mass. The heavier it is, the more stable it is. So while at the lower floor, the thickness of the floor is eight inches, at the upper floor, we had to increase to 12 inches. 
and that makes the building stable within the acceptable. Uh, now, these are constructions, so the architects, they like construction. So 